Well, hello again, it's Lee back down in the lab and I've got the Telenza unit set up, the Telenza Telenode. And all I'm gonna do is just see if, when you plug it in, it transmits and see if we can capture that signal on our spectrum analyzer. So this is what we have set up here. The Telenza unit is here. I've plugged it into the mains with the live and neutral in, and I've put some little things on the end of these connectors here because they will be plenty live at mains voltage. In fact, the whole thing in various parts is going to be live at mains voltage, so I will refrain from touching it. I've put the unit into a little bit of tape here, a bit of gaffer tape, just to make sure it doesn't fall onto me. And this here is a 868 megahertz quarter wave antenna. I've just folded the ground plane back here because we don't really need it uh, for this proximity. So we should transmit from here and we should receive here. If it transmits anything, it might not. It might be looking for a base station to transmit to first or to receive first rather before it transmits itself. But we don't know until we plug it in. I mean, for all I know, it might just go up in a puff of smoke when, when we plug it in in just a minute, which would be an exciting video, wouldn't it? Okay, so I'm going to plug this... Uh, this light in, this is the, the LED light which you we saw on the Harvard Engineering video. It's, um, it's a bit rattly, which is a, a bit disturbing. So I'll put the neutral in here. So the neutral is common, just with the supply. And yes, it isn't plugged. I'll shove that in there, like that. And then the red wire here, this is the, the output from the relay in this device here. So I'll put the live into there like that. Didn't go in very well, did it? Uh, try it again. There we are. Okay. And I think that's turned on now. I'll put the light just a little bit out of uh, out of the way here because otherwise you'll it'll just swamp the camera. But we should see it there. And I'll shall I put the spectrum analyzer back on? Yes, I will put the spectrum analyzer back on because that's really what we're trying to find in this video. And I will hold the light up here so you can see it turn on and off again. There we are. So, there we are. So, light's on. The relay clicked. And it will turn off in just a moment. I've not seen any RF activity yet. Look into the light. And in just a moment, it should click off. You can hear the latching relay click. And I'll just flip back to the um, lenser box. There, you can see those little lights flashing there. So it's definitely doing something. Back over here now. Uh, we didn't miss anything down here, which is good. And the relay has clicked and the light is now off. So presumably it's going through some kind of test routine here, which is which is fine. Oh. So after some playing around, I've managed to capture the Telenza device, uh, which has vanished. Here it is. Uh, Telenza device here. I managed to catch it transmitting. It transmits about two minutes and ten seconds after power on. And it's a, it's a very short transmission, a bit like the Harvard engineering device. It transmits a, a very short burst just to say, I'm here and presumably wait for something to talk back to it. So you can see it here on the screen. This is the, the peak here, which is what's about minus, just, just in the minus 60 dBm. And that is with my uh, quarter wave reference antenna right next to the Telenza device. Uh, the spectrum here, you can see, is, is a lot lot quieter than it was on the previous trace attempts. And that's because I ended up encapsulating the, the whole device in a bit of uh, RF shielding here just to get that noise down. But there it is. It's, uh, it transmits. It's, as we expected, very low power transmission. Uh, and we can see it live here. There, I just, uh, there we are. And that's the transmission there. And that's about it, really. There are a couple of other odd looking transmissions, but uh, there's, um, here they are there. They're, they're very, very tiny and it's, you can't really make it out even on the uh, SDR here. 
because they are very, very low indeed. But there we are, that's it. It is uh, about 868.3 megahertz, and it uh, transmits that tiny little bit, which I've lost again now. Where's it gone? Here it is. There it is there. Uh, but that's all you get. But at least we've seen it transmit now, so we know it's uh, it's live and it does something, which is uh, a bit of an achievement, I suppose. Um, however, in the process, I managed to blow up my uh, RTL SDR here because, uh, well, as we said, that the whole parts of the uh, Telenza device are live at mains voltage, and unfortunately, my reference antenna was not um, insulated and it brushed against. Uh, Something that was alive and all the power went down, thank goodness for RCDs. And uh, I suspect this is now um, is now died, but um, I'll probably be able to fix it. Or, you know, they're cheap enough, I'll just buy another one for Christmas. What I'll do now is I will attach the little bit of RF cable, which I've lost somewhere in the pile of bits and pieces, onto the cleanser device. And we will do an antenna test and see what the antenna's like. If, of course, this is uh, this is not dead. If it is dead, I will use uh, one of my other SDRs here and we'll just use that and I'll have to adjust results because we want to compare it, of course, uh, with the Harvard engineering device and see what the difference in the antenna actually is going to be. Um, so I'm going to do that now and I'll be right back. I have attached the antennas that will be tested very soon to some little Lego platforms using uh, the ubiquitous double-sided sticky pads and uh, a couple of zip ties just to make sure it doesn't move. This is the Harvard engineering antenna and I changed the cable as well on the end just to make sure it matches the cable with the Telenza antenna which has also been attached to a uh, Lego platform with some double-sided sticky pads and some uh, cable ties here and all that happens is that these will attach to the top of the platform here and the Lego platform will rotate these 360 degrees uh, from sort of here right way around the platform to the other side and then every two degrees the SDR receiver which appears to have survived its little 240 volt encounter will take a reading and then we'll plot that reading on a polar chart and we'll be able to see what the radiation pattern of the antenna is. Uh, this has already been done for this antenna here. It is uh, pretty much uniformly circular, so it is, uh, this is an omnidirectional antenna. Despite what some uh, people might claim, this is absolutely omnidirectional. And we are expecting this to be exactly the same as well. Only what I'll do this time as well, I will do two sweeps for both antennas. One sweep in with the, the transmit source being vertically polarised and one sweep with the transmit source being horizontally polarised and that will give us an idea of whether this antenna here is horizontally, vertically or mixed polarisation. I'm going to go and get that all plugged in now and uh, I will video the turntable going around and taking the readings and then we'll make those polar chart plots and we'll see what we get. So we have set up the Harvard engineering antenna on the Lego turntable. It's connected to a Linux receiver with the SDR and there is on the other side of the room through the door there is a transmitter there which transmits a simple carrier wave at 869 megahertz and that's received by this end here and what we do is we take a signal strength reading, receive signal strength reading, and then rotate the antenna two degrees, and then take another reading, and we just keep doing that until it's been through 360 degrees. And then we'll change the polarization of the transmitter to horizontal, it's currently vertical, and we'll see what difference we get. And then we'll do exactly the same thing, but for this antenna here, which is of course the antenna from the Telenza unit. So here we go, I will exit the room whilst this operates so I don't, uh, my body doesn't affect the characteristics of the antenna at all. Okay, so that is completed now. We've done the full rotation and the results are here on the computer. So what I'll do, the results are stored in a file called map 
So I'm going to change that file to map dash um, Harvard dat dash I not spell things properly map dash Harvard dash vertical. Okay, and then what I'll do is I'll go and change the polarization of the transmit antenna to horizontal just by simply turning it around. And okay, it is now horizontally polarized. I will run the test again and then do exactly the same for the Talenza antenna. Okay, and that's completed now, so I will transfer those results to a, uh, another machine and we will take a look at them a bit later. But first, of course, I've got to uh, do the same test for the Talenza antenna. So I will swap, out, swap over the, um, the antennas now. It's very easy to do on the Talenza antenna. We're going to put it with that bit there facing forwards. Uh, that is what... Uh, the claim is that is the direction of the uh, highest gain there, so the main lobe should be pointing out here. So we'll put that in first, and then we can see if that's true on our results on process those. A little less flat there, maybe. Okay, that's ready. I will just change the uh, memory card of the camera, and off we go. The horizontally polarized test of the Talenza antenna here is now complete. The transmitter is now vertically polarized. The basement is quite chilly. So I will start this test of the Talenza antenna with vertically polarized transmitted signal. Uh, and then I will leave the room and let it be and then come back, get the results and we'll see what it looks like on the plot. If I don't lose the plot first, that is. Here we go. Okay, so that is the final test complete. We have now tested the Harvard Engineering antenna with both vertical and horizontally polarized transmitters, and we've tested the Talenza antenna with both horizontally and vertically polarized transmitters. I will take those files and go away and stick it onto Excel. Uh, I'll be right back with the results. The results are in and I've plotted them onto a polar chart on Excel and you can see it right now. So these are the full columns here with the results. That is the number of degrees uh, that uh, uh, have been rotated so the antennas pointing uh, here on the left hand side. The acronyms at the top here that is Harvard horizontal polarized, Harvard vertical polarized, Talenza horizontal and Talenza vertically polarized and these are the actual figures that have come in from the receiver. So we see some interesting plots here. This is a picture of the Talenza antenna. This is how it is oriented so you can quite easily see where the uh, um, well, there's nothing to see because it's omnidirectional. But you can quite easily see the pattern uh, with relation to the antenna and therefore, of course, the antenna characteristics. There were a few outliers, so there's some outliers here, look, that just um, for some reason you suddenly get a, uh, what's this, a, a, almost a D, just under a dB difference here. Some of them were like a whole decibel difference. I've removed those and all I did is I averaged the reading before and reading after that outlier. Um, there could be a few reasons for those outliers. It could be uh, a quirk of the software-defined radio, because uh, I'm only doing uh, quite a small average of received signal over that time. It, uh, it could be a, a quirk in the transmitter, um, or possibly a dodgy cable as well, just when it goes to a, a certain orientation, maybe it's a slightly dodgy connection. But I wouldn't have thought so, because all the other readings are absolutely fine. So those outliers are just quirks, and... Uh, nothing significant. When there's a slightly more interesting set of outliers, like around about here, I've left those in there because they could be interesting to look at. But what we have here is the um, 
first let's look at the, the Harvard antenna because we've seen those before haven't we this is the Harvard antenna vertical plot here and as you see it's uh, it is omnidirectional and it looks absolutely absolutely fine there is a uh, so it's about neg 23 db uh, also around the, the plot here and that that's pretty decent and it's what you'd expect for a monopole quarter wave vertical ground plane antenna absolutely fantastic when the polarization was switched to horizontal you see there is a significant drop here uh, so that's gone from like neg 23.6 to neg 25 uh, so that's about uh, what's about that nearly five dBs drop. Um, down here it is uh, neg twenty eight to neg twenty three point six. So three and a, three and a bit dB drop there. Uh, quite a significant drop here, which is interesting. So from neg thirty up to neg twenty three. Uh, so that's about six dB. You'd normally expect about um, three, maybe three point five dB drop when you switch the polarization from horizontal to vertical and uh, when the other side is different polarization uh, it's a bit more than that but um, that's okay it's not, it's not a massive drop so we're uh, absolutely fine what is interesting is that the Talenza antenna the difference between the vertical polarization and the horizontal polarization is not quite as much it's uh, what, just about 2 dB uh, 1.5 dB which is less than you'd expect, but we have an explanation for that, and that is because, if I just grab it up here, the Talenza antenna has this horizontal bit on top here, and the vertical part here. So you're going to get a horizontal and vertical component to that, uh, which can be very good, because you never quite know what uh, polarization your signal is going to be, especially if you're receiving reflections off buildings, uh, that could change the polarization, so so that's quite a nice thing to have. But generally, you'd expect it to be vertically polarized, so it would be more efficient to have a vertically polarized antenna like the Harvard Engineering antenna here, uh, which has a fairly good response there. But what you can see is that the the Harvard Engineering antenna uh, vertically polarized is significantly better than the antenna on the Talenza devices. Uh, by, what's that, say that's sort of neg 24 to uh, Talenza vertical neg 29. Oh, that's, that's quite a significant difference, that is. So that's, that's quite a few dB that uh, you're missing there because the Talenza antenna is, it's a, it's a small, low-profile antenna. And when you make antennas smaller than they should be, it's going to be a compromise and you're going to lose out on, on some of that gain. Uh, which is a perfectly normal thing. But what I really want to point out is that this is the Talenza antenna here vertical and in grey here it's uh, the horizontally polarised uh, pattern of the antenna. They are in both polarisations on the directional antennas. This is the direction here from that little slot there that um, the claim is that is the directionality of the antenna that's where it has most um, forward gain. Um, there's there's that tiny slot there in the antenna, it makes no electrical significance at all. And uh, clearly you can see here there's no response change in the antenna at all, really. There's a little bit of a quirk up here. Um, that could be because of the relays in the way here. Uh, and it's vertically polarised, so that relay, uh, it could just be the big relay coil there, which is going to disrupt the... Uh, signal here and you see as soon as you're out of the way of the relay coil and up here it's uh, it's looking uh, a lot more sensible. Um, there is uh, again a, a bit of a uh, gain difference down here but that is probably because that little component there that uh, blue one is uh, sort of raised off of the surface of the board there so that will also uh, cause some disruption to the pattern in that direction. But there we are the Harvard Engineering antenna is uh, in both planes, vertical and horizontal, it is omnidirectional. And the Talenza antenna in both planes is also an omnidirectional antenna. If a, uh, to be honest, it's a bit crap, uh, really. You'd, uh, why they didn't just stick a bit of wiring and make it a vertical antenna, 
as they do on some of their devices, it is, I'm not really sure. Presumably they wanted just to have this nice low profile dome here on top of the lamppost because, uh, well, you know, it's, it's, I guess it's a, a bit less um, sticky yuppy looking, but uh, it's, it's fine. Considering these lampposts are going to be typically in uh, fairly urban areas, the base station's not going to be very far away, and so you're not really going to worry about those few dBs of signal gain there, especially when they have a, a receive amplifier on board, which is going to make up for, for some of that um, if it increases the, the noise floor, but that, that's fine because it's a, it's a good receiver. So there we are. That is the plots, the polar plots of both those antennas in both horizontal and vertical planes. And as expected, there is, um, it's interesting to look at, but there's not much to see. And the antenna is definitely not directional. Uh, to those people who are claiming that it is directional, I would challenge you to prove that. And you can prove it either by running a test such as the test I've run here, just plotting the antenna patterns, or maybe you can prove it with some science and maths and engineering. Uh, only, of course, you can't because it is a lie. The antenna is not directional uh, in any way, shape or form. Um, at least on the, the, the azimuth. Um, on the vertical plane, there will be some directionality because it is a essentially a monopole antenna. And so it's going to have that... Um, oh, I've got a thing here. The, that'll do. That sort of kind of donut shape like that. So you'll get uh, a good response around here. But in the air at the top and at the bottom here, there'll be quite a poor response. And you'll see uh, much lower signals uh, if you're transmitting from, from the top or transmitting from the bottom. Uh, because, of course, you don't want your, your signal to go up into the sky because that's not where things are. You want your signal to go horizontal here on the azimuth plane. Uh, so, yeah, that's it. Uh, that uh, concludes the test of those antennas. Um, I hope you found it interesting. I'm going to be testing some other antennas. Uh, that, that I find around. These ones will actually be directional, like the ones I've tested and shown in this exact same way in some previous videos, but possibly slightly more quirky antennas. And uh, a super idea I was sent in was to make some Teletubby antennas and to test those. So I'm going to make four antennas with the shape of whatever those things are on the, the Teletubby's heads, and we'll make them for 869 megahertz, the same as this one, and it'll be quite good fun, wouldn't it, to see if we can get a Teletubby antenna to outperform these. That would be quite interesting. But along with that video, I'll also go through a bit of antenna theory, and we can look at the antennas and work out how they work, and how the different shapes and the construction materials will affect the characteristics of the antenna. Until then, I'm down in the lab, the heating is on, it's nice and warm, and I'm going to go and do something else. Have a fantastic rest of your day, or night, or whatever it happens to be. Goodbye. Don't forget to hit subscribe down below if you like what you've seen here, so you get all the updates, all the new videos, and the Christmas special. Bye-bye.